We try to leave the water alone as much as possible. Uh, beyond that is, it gets very complicated very quickly. Water chemistry isn't really a good 101 topic. I feel I understand it okay, decently, but there is so much left to learn. Malt extract is a great way to keep your brew process a quick one. Now you're going to learn about water and its importance in the brew process. So, so water, there's, there's a book on water, it's called Water. So it's the least understood component of making beer. And it's, uh, you know, it's everywhere. You find it everywhere, right? And you just, you, you want to, um, you want to treat it. In a, in a municipality like where we're at here in Torrance, where we're drawing from all the different water sources, we treat our water here. So we use carbon filtration, then we make reverse osmosis out of it, takes it down to two parts per million, and then we blend back in our city water with a TDS meter on our reverse osmosis unit, and we dial in how much of that mineral content from the source water minus the, uh, the carbon filtration that it goes through, and we bring it back up to our water profile for our beers. And um, you know, you can do that at home with um, your local water quality report and acid, chalk, you name it. You can buffer your water to get the mineral profile for, for the beer you want to brew. We try to leave the water alone as much as possible. Uh, beyond that is, it gets very complicated very quickly. Water chemistry isn't really a good 101 topic. I feel I understand it okay decently, but there is so much left to learn, uh, and it's a, there's a lot of interaction of a couple different areas of chemistry that are well over my head, so at this point we're dealing with some fundamentals like pH and alkalinity that are, well, they're not necessarily fundamentals, but they're parameters that I can understand. Um, so for water processing, we limit it to uh, carbon filtration to remove chlorine because that will uh, add flavors downstream in the finished product that we really don't want. It's kind of one of the areas that separates uh, the early homebrew from later homebrewers and professional brewers is the um, carryover of what we call chlorophenols into the product. It's just, they taste bad. Um, it ruined the beer, it ruined our brewery reputation, and they just, they're not good for the yeast either. Bunch of, bunch of things, just bad, bad, bad. Uh, so all we might concern right now is just removal of chlorine. Other breweries will use reverse osmosis. I find that to be a bit wasteful. Um, a lot of water has to go in to get the um, stripped down water that you get out. Um, so we're just, as far as inline processing, the carbon filter is it. When it comes to the actual brewing, um, we'll add acid or like lime to the water depending on where we need the alkalinity and pH to go. Then um, further down the line we'll add uh, calcium chloride or gypsum, calcium sulfate, and um, Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate to the water for um, what we call like a flavor adjustment chemicals. So they're, they're water chemicals, but they're there to enhance the beer flavor, either to promote maltiness and roundedness, or um, bitterness and like a hop complexity. All right, so you just learned all about what you need to get started on your brew. Coming up in our next module, we're getting in depth into the fermentation process. Fermentation is the metabolic, a metabolic process of um, yeast. So, during the course of fermentation, the yeast reproduce, they eat, they build up stores in uh, their food source um, for a next generation, for they go into a dormant phase and they build up reserves 